Hills Presbyterian Church, a church in the community, serving the community of God. As the suburban area south of Fort Loudon Lake and west of Alcoa Highway developed in the 1950s, residents began to feel the need for a community church. After diligent work by the 32 charter members, Lake Hills Presbyterian Church was organized by Knoxville Presbytery on October 20, 1957, under the helpful sponsorship of Sequoia Hills Presbyterian Church. By December of that year, services, which had been being held in the homes of members, were moved to the Presbyterian Chapel, a trailer on Alcoa Highway. And in February of 1958, the Reverend Robert Larson began his ministry as the first pastor of the church. The completed first unit of the building at Maloney Road and Montlake Drive was dedicated on April 10, 1960. A much needed larger sanctuary and additional classrooms and offices were added in 1968, increasing the church's ability to serve the worship, instruction, and meeting place needs of the community. By 1978, the concept of a community church first envisioned in 1958 had become a reality. In cooperation with the community and the county, tennis courts, playground equipment, and a ball field had been established. And a supervised summer recreation program for young people was underway. Community organizations felt welcome to use the building for their meetings, as well as Boy Scout and Girl Scout groups. Outreach to the Montgomery Village Ministry, South Knoxville Girls Club, Lakeshore Mental Health Institute, and food pantries for the needy served the extended neighborhood. Forty-five years ago, I was three years old when Lake Hills was founded. My parents were charter members, and this is the only church that I've ever been a member of. My memories of growing up in the church are a treasure to me, and my earliest memories of Sunday school are of being in a hotel room on Alcoa Highway. In the beginning, the church met at various locations, including the hotel, the Saban nightclub, and a trailer. But we met, and we were a church. Then we got a new building, 
and it was right down the street from my house. It had a yard to play in, and I could walk to church with my dad. And we did that on most Sundays. The sanctuary is the old fellowship hall, and it didn't have air conditioning, and we sat on metal folding chairs. We didn't have an organ, and we didn't have carpet. I don't know how we got by, but we did. One of Bob Larson's most regular attendees was my dog, Duke. He would come in the early in the summer when the windows were open in the fellowship hall and put his paws up on the window sill, and he would listen to Bob's sermon. I also remember Mrs. Rogers in the children's choir. She tried to teach me to sing, and, and unfortunately, she wasn't successful. But we also had, after the, we got the new building, we had a baseball field out here. And the community here at the neighborhood was full of, of young boys. And we would meet in the summer almost every day. And the church built a backstop. They had balls and bats. We had catcher's equipment. Uh, we played ball almost every day. And it, it was a wonderful way to spend the summer. We'd ride our bikes down here and just spend the whole day at the church. We also had a Boy Scout troop when I was growing up. It was a different troop than we have now. And I got my Eagle Scout there. Well, fast forwarding a little bit, when I was on session, and we decided we needed a mission statement. Mike came to a meeting and he said, I think I've got it. A church in the community serving the community of God. It was perfect. Everything that I had grown up seeing in the church, that said it all in one sentence. When you look at the Boy Scouts, the youth groups, the baseball field, the walking track, the tennis courts, Montgomery Village, and all the local mission work we do, a church in the community serving the community of God is what we are. The church has always been a big part of my life, and throughout my life, every time I walk through its doors, it doesn't matter what troubles or worries I have, when I leave, the load is always a little lighter. There's something special about this place. The vision the founders had and that we continue today, from the hotel to the completion of the third construction phase, I look around and I think they would be very proud of what we are today. Lake Hills has come this far through hard work and the generous giving of the congregation and some wonderful leadership from some wonderful pastors. It's been a, a lot of good memories. Thank you.